Hello, everybody. I know I'm I'm unshaven, but you know it's late at night. I've had a long day, and I'm you know I'm doing a video here for you. A lot of people, especially very close to me, wonder why the heck I'm so fixated on Armenia, on Armenians, on the first Christian nation. And I did a video yesterday uh, talking about it, and I, this is kind of a continuation of that video. This map. Just, I love this map. Found it at an Armenian bookstore, and it's just exactly what I needed. And I, I want you to focus. These three lakes are, are what draw my eye every time I see this part of the world. First of all, you as a Christian, you got to share this video because I'm going to explain to you why it's important that we focus on what's going on over here right now. Armenia is being attacked. Turkey it has in 20 in 1915 marched this way and massacred 2 million Christians 1.5 million of them were Armenians Christians but some of them were Greek some of them were Assyrian um, a few other ethnicities that were uh, Christians massacred 2 million and marched this way and would have gone all the way to the sea and completely wiped out all the Christians if the war World War 1 hadn't ended and so at the end of World War 1 there's this little sliver that remains called Armenia. And today, the Turks of Azerbaijan are being fueled by the Turks of Turkey with weapons and men and hatred and propaganda to attack the Armenians, to, to, to squeeze them from both sides, to, to annihilate them. That's the ultimate goal. There's been a five-year ceasefire peace agreement. Five years is a blip. I doubt, I doubt that'll even last five years. I got Russian peacekeepers in there now, but that's not going to last. Now, Christians, why? Why the heck should we care about these, these Armenians over here? Number one, they're Christians. Number two, God cares about this part of the world. Have you read your Bible? Have you read your Bible? There's a guy named Paul. Paul was formerly named Saul of Tarsus. Now, where's Tarsus? Anybody? Anybody? Where's Tarsus? Boom. Right there. Right there. How about um, Galatians? There's a book in the Bible, in the New Testament, called Galatians. Do you have any idea where Galatia is? Do you know where Galatia is? Boom. That, this whole region is Galatia. Look, look over here on this map. Look, look at this. Right there. What's that? Galatia. Right? Ankara. Spelled in an old way. But this is the capital of Turkey today. Ankara. Galatia. <laughs> look. Let me go to Paul's missionary journey. Wait, over here. Look. Over here is Ephesus. Ephesians. Right there. Tarsus. That's where Paul was born. Right? Right down here. Jesus is born down here. It's not on the map, but just slide off, slightly off. <laughs> oh, look. Look. It's Armenia. Armenia, right there. And this is a map from 2,000 years ago. Armenia, my, Armenia Minor, all of this region. And this little lake right here, that's Lake Vaughn. I don't know what that says, but that's Lake Vaughn. That's this one right here, Lake Vaughn. Look, look Paul, look. Here, he's from Tarsus right there. He traveled out from Jerusalem. He went all over this area, Galatia right here. Oh, look at this. Antioch. See Antioch right there? That little region, Antioch. In the Bible it says they were first called Christians at Antioch. It was in modern day Turkey that the term Christian was coined. And now Turkey is massacring Christians. So God cares about this part of the planet because this is where it all began and it's where it's still happening. Abraham, Abraham, the father of many nations, born down here in Ur, traveled up the Babylonians, traveled up this way. Recognize those three lakes right there? Those three lakes? Oh, and what's that? What is that? Right smack dab in the middle of those three lakes. Mount Ararat. That's where the reset happened. God's like, I'm going to kill everybody. Noah, get in that boat. And let's start over. I've been there. <laughs> I remember looking at that mountain going, huh, this is where God wanted to 
restart and reset. There's Armenians there today. God cares about this part of the world. We should too, as Christians. You read your Bible, you should care about what's going on there right now. What kind of Christian are you? Let's read some of that Bible. The call of Abraham, friend of God. Any of you Turks and Azeris who've made it this far into this video, you may recognize that expression, the friend. The Lord had said to Abraham, or Abram, before he was Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. That's a promise. Abraham is the father of many nations. He's also the father of three world religions, the Israelites, the Jewish religion, the Christians, and the Muslims. The Muslims claim Abraham as their forefather as well. And that's something we can unite around. Even in the Torah, the Jewish Bible, the Christian Bible, says it right here. This is Hagar, because the, the Muslims trace back, uh, they claim Ishmael is the, the son of Abraham is their forefather, and that's the branch, the, the offspring of Abraham that they claim. And even the mother Hagar went to the, and the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said to her, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. Well, look at, let's look at those numbers. Here it is. Christians, largest religious group. This is a, this is a statistic from 2015, so it's about five years old. The, it, based on a world population at the time of uh, 7.3 billion, uh, we're at about 7.8, 7.9 billion now, approaching 8 billion. Um, but the, the proportions haven't changed much. So uh, Christians here at 31.2% of the planet and Muslims at 24.1% of the planet. Over here, in, numerically, it's 2.3 billion. I think it's 2.4 billion Christians now and 1.9 billion Muslims now. But look at this. It's more than half of the entire globe. What was that promise made to Abraham? That your offspring, both both Isaac and Ishmael, that there would be they would be multiplied, they would be... Uh, abundant, <laughs> great nations, and all of the earth will be blessed through Abraham. And as Christians, we believe it was the descendant of Abraham, Jesus, that is the truest blessing. And even, all right, this is kind of an aside, but there's a scripture in the, in, well, in the, in the Quran about when Abraham was called to sacrifice his son. Now, the Muslims believe that it was Ishmael that Abraham was about to sacrifice. And in the Torah, in the, the Hebrew Bible, it says that God provided a goat or a ram, a substitute. Um, but in the Quran, it doesn't reference a, an animal. It simply says God provided a superior sacrifice so that Abraham wouldn't sacrifice his son. And... I've concluded, what is a superior sacrifice? If Abraham is the friend of God, like friend on the, on the level, right? And, and what is a superior sacrifice to sacrificing your own son? Abraham was about to sacrifice his own son, but the Quran says that Abraham or that God provided a superior sacrifice. God provided his own son. There's nothing more superior than sacrificing your own son, than someone giving their son for yours. So in that sense, the Quran is actually more accurate that the friend of God, God's friend Abraham, God provided his own son instead of Abraham killing his own. But finally, and I'll get back to this, there is a difference between, between Christians and Muslims. Christians dominating. There were zero 2,000 years ago. There were zero Muslims 2,000 years ago. And look, now we're more than half the planet. But the Bible says it's the kindness of God that leads men to repentance. Muslim nations typically have oppressive legal structures. Women are not considered 
fully human. They're not considered equal. That's just one example. I won't go into other examples, but that mere fact, the Bible says God created them, man and woman, in his image. That There is no superior or inferior. You know, men are the stronger and women are the weaker. That's just physicality. It's genetically obvious, but there's not one that's superior to the other. Both are essential and both are in God's image. And that's a problem for Muslims. All right. I I could babble on, but babble on. Share this video. Subscribe. Pass the word along. And click the notification bell.